Welcome to the using the Datacom SQL Performance Analyzer video. Hi, in this video, we'll take a look at the Datacom SQL Performance Analyzer. What does this tool do and how to use it? As a developer writing the queries, you would want to ensure the query is efficient. If not, you would look for some data to help identify the step that requires tuning. Or as a DBA admin, you want to ensure that the health of the overall health of the DB is fine. This could include viewing the current activity to check if the queries are running properly or if any query is executing for a longer time than required or is any query is using way too much resources. So how do we do that? You can do that using a SQL Performance Analyzer. It provides you with the data required to help you identify any issues with the queries, if there are any bottlenecks, and if there are any, then it allows you to cancel the current transactions or place a limit on the execution time or the CBSIO resource unit so that the next time the query is um, executed, it will be canceled automatically. So let's check out the features that are currently available. Once you log in, you will see the list of cached queries in the source cache. The statistics for each query is also listed. So the query number is the unique value associated with the select query. Datacom SQL allows you to specify the keyword query number, that is query NO for your select statement followed by a unique number. So this helps you to identify the query that you know you want to go and monitor or check. The executed is the number of times the query was executed. Elapsed time, that's in milliseconds, is the time taken for the query to to be executed. We have both the total and the average. CBSIO is a number of resource units that the query used. So one for the physical IO and one for every 100 rows that was accessed. And then we have the filter factor. The filter factor actually is a measure of the uh, efficiency of the query. So what is an efficient query? An efficient query is a query that access only the rows that it really needs. So we want to aim for one for both the index and the data. That indicates that only the rows that were required were actually accessed. So this gives you an idea like anything below one or zero, it's going to tell you that, you know, for example, if it's zero, um, it read all the rows that were accessed were actually thrown away. So we typically want our queries to, you know, be closer to one. And the last three columns is actually the memory use it's for the temporary table, the joins and the subqueries and the hash. And you can also filter or search for a particular query number. So let's say you want to, uh, you know, list only the queries that start with say 78. Um, you would just uh, specify, uh, use the like syntax here, and um, it'll just uh, list only the queries that start with 78. Uh, you can clear your search. Similarly, you can uh, search for the internal uh, table name you will follow the format dbid dot uh, the three character table name. So let's say thousand dot SCV and you search on that and it should list only the queries um, that access that table. You can also search for a text in the query text. And if that string is not found, um, it would list like no queries were found. Each column is uh, sortable. 
and you can also filter um, at this level. Um, let's say you want to um, look for what is beginning with 78 and you want anything the last time anything above 100. So you can filter each and every each and end operation on the filtering. Um, so you can just uh, specify what you want to filter against and you know you can go drill down to the query that you know queries that you're particularly interested in. To view the uh, details of a specific query, just click on the row and that would display all the detailed information pertaining to the query. This include the processing steps um, for the query. So basically um, the, what type of join was used and um, the aggregate table, um, the, the rows read, um, the number of rows scanned and the data rejected, etc. They're all displayed in the processing steps. Um, and then comes um, the actual query text that's also displayed here. And the query statistics is um, the time taken for the query to execute and also the resource units um, uh, for the query. So if you want to limit the query to a specific uh, elapsed time or to a specific CBSIO uh, value, so you would just update it right here. So for example, uh, let's say we do, this query is running for a long time every time it's being executed. So I don't want it to ex exceed, let's say 3000 milliseconds. So you would update this here and if, this query next time when it's executed and exceeds this um, this value that we have specified here, it will be automatically um, cancelled. So, for example, now if I were to submit this, uh, run this query again. So I've submitted the query. So let's go. Look at this details of this query again. So now you can see that it was executed uh, four times. There is an increment, and and the last time, if you see that it ran only for three thousand and odd milliseconds. So the query was um, automatically cancelled when it exceeded that limit. Similarly. You can also set a limit on the CBSIO, the resource used, um, and uh, limit the query. That way, um, you can make sure that this particular query uh, or a badly performing query is not taking up all the resources and the time. So you can also um, get the SQL optimization report from this uh, page. So clicking on the get SQL optimization report should generate the optimization report and display it. And uh, if you need to save this for later reference, you can open this in a separate tab. And this will allow you to like, you know, compare it or save it for a future reference. The user can also view the current activity in the database. So this lists the, the current transactions in the database. Um, the statistics uh, include um, the LUW, the request number, the job name, the access or ID, the terminal, and the number of requests um, in this transaction and the start time for this transaction and uh, how long this transaction has been active, the last request in the transaction and how long the last request has been running. So again, here you can say a search based on the job name. So you would again use the light clause for this. Um, if you know what your uh, job name starts with, 
and you can search and it should list only that particular um, transaction. Um, so then you can go and view the details for the transaction. Clear filter should clear all the search filter. Again, all the columns are uh, sortable and you can also filter at this level um, based on the job name um, or based on the um, accessor ID. Okay, let's um, click on this query. I just submitted this query. And if you see for this, the query text is available. So you can uh, generate the optimization report for this query. And it gives you the details as to what join is used or the key used. Um, and this can be used to further tune your query. And uh, if you want to, and this query is a long running query with multiple um, queries running in this transaction. So I want to cancel this. So I can go and select this and say, I want to cancel this query. And then this particular transaction will be flagged for deletion. And if you reload the table, you see that, that the query has been canceled. You can also cancel multiple transactions at the same time, just pick the transactions that you want to cancel and click on the cancel button. And the LUWs will be flagged for deletion. And uh, once you refresh the table, you can see that those uh, transactions will be canceled. Um, that uh, concludes our uh, overview of the Datacom SQL Performance Analyzer. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, please um, reach out to the Datacom SQL team at Broadcom. Thank you.